Hello everyone, I'm Robert Iassi. Most of you will know me, but for you that don't, I'm the UK's number one unconscious mind therapist. And welcome to the Mindclap podcast. Yeah, and thanks for coming on, Tommy. Really appreciate it, mate. We're right looking forward to this one. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. Really looking forward to it. And I've been following your story over the years and that, mate. And um, seems like you're from a working class state like myself, off a council state, that right? Yeah, man. Dyslexic like me. I love it, mate. I love the, it. I the, love dyslexic, but never, um, never, never actually had the test to tell me that I am. Yeah, but you, you know, know what I mean. Enough. Oh, it could be dyspraxic, dyslexic. I'm gonna say, mate. I mean, I can read a, I can read, I can read a page to someone, but I ain't got a clue what I fucking read. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Unless yeah. I'm interested. If I'm interested, in it, I can sort of take a bit in. Do you know? You know what? It interested me what you said the other day when you were talking to Dean. That's how I got on it. Yeah. I see the gaffer on here. <laughs> I was listening to what you said, and you said something about um, you can read stuff you're interested in, and um, for me. I remember years ago, even when I was in school, um, I, could, I, could, I had trouble with everything, reading and all that. And my old man come in school once and said, you've got to give him something he's interested in too, and he'll fly with it. And at the time, I was interested in motorbikes. So they give me a project on motorbikes, and I flew, I flew through it. Yeah. But apart from that, mate, if you give me a book to read, you've got no chance. Is it, would you like this as well, Tom? Like with me, if, if sometimes in school I wanted to do well. Like I thought, I got a, cl a cl slap off my old man at a shit school before. I think, right, I'm knuckling it down this year. I'll yeah. get in there. I'll try to learn. They'll be talking to me. But I ain't got, and I, they'll, they'll sit and speak to the teacher, talk about something. I'll be listening, really trying to learn. And then when they finish speaking, they go, they go what did I just say? And I ain't got a fucking clue. I don't remember what I am you know trying to learn, but I couldn't physically take it in. Funny enough, I, um, I failed everything in school. I didn't get one GCSE. But I, um, I, I done well in history. I passed history. I don't know if my the teacher passed me because she liked me. But funny enough, I got right into like the World War Two and all that. And yeah. when I got into it, I done all right. I only got a C, but that was the only pass would, I got in school. Was that? Would you know what? Do you know where it is? It is if you got to new studies are proven over the last. The brain scans have shown over the last about five years now. If you have, if you're dyslexic, or you're dyspraxic, one of the two, you have ADHD. Right, that mm. you can't have one without another. So there's loads of people out there who's got dyslexia who don't understand they've got ADHD or dyspraxic, and there's a lot of people that's um, you know the other way around as well. So, it, and when it comes down to, there's different levels of ADHD, but it's more like ADD as we get older. But it means we can, and what they say is the bollocks thing that they talk about is if people have got ADHD, they say they can't focus, and this is where I think we'll grab your attention because we can't focus on anything we're not interested in. So anyone who's got kids out there listening in, yeah, or brothers, or if you've got ADHD or dyslexic, when they tell you you can't focus, it's a load of bollocks. Don't let them tell you that. It just means you can't conform. You, you can't focus on what they tell you to focus on. Yeah, you have to have a passion for something. We have to enjoy something. So it don't mean you can't focus. It means that actually what it proves is we hyper-focus. So we can't focus on hardly anything we're not interested in. But when we find something we love, we hyper-focus. We become exactly. fucking obsessed. Exactly, yeah, obsessed. Like, yeah, I, I'll play can I can play like the guitar, like Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton. Do you know what I mean? I play golf in single figures. I beat therapists around the world and fucking let's go at 14. Um, mm. so it's it's always I'm the obsessed. way, isn't it? Yeah, I'm obsessed. And I was, that's why I'm so interested in you, Tom. Because when I've heard you speaking over time in your interviews and some of your videos I've watched, yeah, I yeah, couldn't yeah. wait that when you was coming on, I was buzzing because i like to, um, you know, first of all, welcome you on and um, go excited right. talking Thanks about having it. You, I want to get mate. straight into it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so where to start with it is, um, first of all, happy VA Day, VA Day mate. Um, Do you know what? It was good, actually. You know, all the neighbours come out in the street and that. It's the first it's amazing, time I met isn't some it? of them. It was lovely, yeah. I know we're down the street, everyone's waving at each other. Yeah, now, yeah, One yeah, minute yeah. it's like a zombie effect, everyone's shoulders up against Yeah, exactly. Now no, 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 everyone's out there, not on the Prosecco yeah. now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm like, yeah, I'm on the water, son. But um, so Tom, let's go. Um, how did how did you get into town? Let's go back to the reality because I love to hear the story from the beginning, from coming out of school. Even I mean, what's that, what year did you finish school? Did you did you do a lot? Did you tough it to the end? Of yeah, school? yeah, I done a lot. I got I got moved to Essex late in my school year, uh, just as I was about to finish. I had to move school and go to um go to a school in Essex. I went to school in Archway, North London. And um, I got moved out to Romford when I was when I was younger, and it was quite tough to like move in, trying to fit in, and then try and um, 
get on with school at the same time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And the, but I loved it because I, I used to, I, I was an entrepreneur in school, like right, when it comes to whatever it was, fags, like drinks, anything. I loved it. School was the yeah. bollocks for me. I loved every minute of it. And then <laughs> I left school and I've become an architect. I went to be an architect. I work in Canary Wolf because my brother's a quantity survivor. My mum wanted me to um, try what he's doing because my brother's really academic. Um, I tried that for a few months. I had to go to college and do it. As soon as I got to the algebra, I failed. So I couldn't even. I lasted about five, six months doing that. So I left that and then got into a bit of whatever. And then I started um, doing a bit of labouring up the West End for a friend. And then I enrolled myself into college and then become a carpenter. And then it just was yeah. nothing I've ever done has been enough for me. Yeah. So I'm talking like 19, uh, 19, 20. I'm on decent money from being a carpenter, but it was never enough. I was building houses for billionaires up the West End, and it used to make me ill watching them, watching them get yeah. out of Maybachs and Rolls Royces, and I'd be there in work boots. And it was just saying, kid me, I loved doing what I'd done. It was the best best time of my life, really, working on a building site. I loved every minute of it. But I always wanted more. And my head, my head over time, so mm. what I was doing was, is I left that and I was going to move to Spain and just go and tr try and crack sank in Mallorca. Left there, didn't end up going because something happened. And then um, and I was contacted by the show. I said no a few times because I weren't from Essex. I just didn't feel like it was my thing. Anyway, um, I had an eye open, I was saying. I went to see someone that something had happened to and they had said to me, listen, Go and get yourself on there and go and, go and try and crack it. And I've done it. I just I took the punt and went and done it. And um, mate, I didn't earn a penny. Didn't earn a penny on there. The funniest thing is, yeah, is because anyone that looks at my story, they go, he's made it because he's on Towie. Yeah. If I've made it because I'm on fucking Towie, why ain't everyone else? <laughs> else made it, yeah, that's right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I had an odd, yeah. odd, odd run, mate. I went on there and I thought I was going to be the next like get what Joey Essex, uh, Joey Essex had achieved. I thought I was yeah. going to do that. But unfortunately, by the time I had got on there, I'd just missed the boat. It had started yeah. on ITVB. Followers weren't as heavy as they was before. I didn't get many PAs because I was on a relationship straight away. Yeah. Um, yes, boy, the young apprentice should be running about like that. So I like a loon. <laughs> yeah, yes, Tony, what's happening? He knows the score. He knows the apple. All right, Tony. Um, yeah, so then, uh, yeah, I done it. I, my timing was wrong, getting on there. And I, my dad just said to me, as soon as, soon as I got actually got onto the show, he said to me, you need to do something with this. You can't, don't go on there and just go and try brag free stuff with people. Don't yeah. go on there and try and get club PAs. Go on there Be and try creator. and do something. Be a creator. Yeah, Georgia, yeah, you had a... You've got the best uh, girlfriend in well. yeah. <laughs> And, um, mate, funny enough, I started Mallet when I was on the show and I was filming seven days a week at the time. I was earning fuck all. I was filming seven days a week. And I, um, fucking hell, someone's having a proper pie. They've got a microphone a lot. Um, and I just, um, I just, I just, I just done a photo shoot one day and um, wore a pair of trainers. And that was about 500 quid. And at the time, I didn't have the readies to get them. And it just made me feel like when I was, when I was a bit younger and I used to see kids from Essex down my caravan flashiest gear and we from where we was from we had lovely things don't get me wrong but yeah. we weren't like that sort of thing we was like the, the, a different yeah. end to them and it made me feel yeah. like that again and I was like 21 at the time and I was like fuck this so I went home one night and I drew a pair of shoes and I sent them to a geezer that I'd funny enough met the week before in, in 195 I don't know if it's still there now through a, a friend and he he told me that he worked um, doing fabrics in 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 somewhere in Europe. I ain't gonna say where it is. Yeah, you know, people right. trying to hit me up, try and find out where my factories are. And um, <laughs> I just reached out to him and said, "Do you reckon you can make these?" And he made them, and they uh, come out really good. And I just took the punt with it. I ordered like fifty pairs of them. And that's where it started. Just, started with yeah. fifty, and it was the biggest thing I'd ever done. Like, I was. I looked, at it, I looked at them 50 pairs, mate, and I looked at my partner because we had borrowed the ready to do it. We was in a warehouse in Leightonstone, had a fucking hole in the roof. There was water coming through, flooding the gaff every week. And we used to sit there like that waiting for an order. And it weren't, it weren't easy. It didn't start easy. It took a year, two years. No matter how I made it look on, on social media to try and PR the company, 
it weren't going as well as what people thought they was. So yeah. we lost money left, right and centre. That's all we done at the start was lost money. But what it was is I went from being like a guy from the show on Instagram where I used to get a little bit of stick, not too much people re- sort of related to me. I hope they did. Yeah. Um, to all of a sudden becoming sort of someone has took the pun and then people call me an inspiration. And I was 23 at the time. And I was like, fucking hell, this is decent. I like this. I'm actually doing yeah. something well here. Mate, as soon as I got my teeth into it, I'll just become an absolute okay. animal with it, mate. Animal I, with it. Can I ask you something? And, you know, like I'm into big into visualizations. If you look at my work, yeah. you find out that I'm big into visualization, the, the reticular activated system, which is a group of neurons at the bottom of the brain that proves the science behind law of attraction yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff, yeah. So we added added the vision we kind of added when did the vision kick in was it after you made the trainers then was it just like you know what was it no, building I, stages? I, I, think, I think i just i had started and but I'm, do you know what it was a weird one I, I um i always knew always no matter what i went through and what i see growing up i always always knew that i would have it off there was nothing in my head telling me that i couldn't no matter of not being able to read and all that i just knew i was going to get it yeah, and yeah. um the what was it I was in the gym once and a guy come up to me and I'd seen him around, but he had lost about 10 stone, this guy. He looked fit as a fiddle. He showed me a picture of him. He was a big guy. And he went to me, I've got an energy off you, yeah, that I can't, can't take my head off of. And every time I see you, it's mad. So he brought me in a book. It was The Secret. Secret, yeah. And he yeah. went, take this book, please. I'm not even finished reading it. But trust me, you can probably do more of it than I can. So take it. That was like, well, yeah. at, the, at the time, I was like, I've always been spiritual and all that. And I love this geezer. Like, I just thought, this, this is how I want to be, how this guy is. You just come and help me like that. So um, I took the book. It took me a year to read it. I couldn't get past chapter one on it. I literally couldn't do it. I, I tried yeah. as hard as I could to read this book, mate. And it used to piss me off so much. Because I'd be like sitting there waiting for an order on the website trying to read it. And then one day, I just clocked on. And I downloaded it on audiobook. And I listened to it loads and loads of times back to front mate anytime I felt shit I listened to this book and then it just clicked mate it clicked I found someone to make a comparator I flew to Holland with a suitcase tried getting accounts over there to sell my stuff didn't do any well found a shoe brand over there and I was like right that's it I'm gonna I'm, that's it now so that's where they are that's where I'm gonna be in the next year and I've done it in four months fuck it now and right. then in the next four months after that, I flew to Holland and um, met an agent over there who become a really close friend of mine. And in the next four months, I had over 10 stores over there. Now I've got about 20 over there. It. Yeah. Right. 20, and yeah? I've got about 20. Shit, I've got about, bro. globally, I've probably got doors that sell my shoes, over 250. I've got stores in South <laughs> Africa, I've got stores in Dubai, I've got stores in Amsterdam, I've got stores in Germany. Fucking love, tub, I love it, mate. Do you know what? It's, uh, the weird thing is, over these last few weeks, I've been interviewing and the, the, success, the successful people, yeah, the entrepreneurs I'm speaking to, they've all been shit at school. They all create the vision. They all, you know, they all work double hard. It's, it's the patterns the same. And everyone, like Wayne Lineker, so like you just said, you went over, you draw these trainers, yeah. Mm. It's different, but it's the same. Like Wayne Lineker said, he was walking down. He was, he was, you know, the, the market game was coming to the, coming to an end, the fruit and veg and that back in the early 80s. And he's, he's thinking, my brother's cracked it as a football. I was thinking, what can I do on the back of the family name? And he said, I was walking down the street, going to the cafe to get a bacon roll. All of a sudden, his image popped in my head. Boom, Lineker's bar. Yeah. And he said, just like you, I couldn't get it out of me nut. He said, I just kept fucking thinking of it. And exactly, then, yeah. You've got to hear his story. It's a good story. Nice, mate. Right, listen, he, yeah. he's a beast as well, what he's done. Whatever, whatever anything anyone says about him, mate. Take your hat off to him. He's flying. Visionary, mate. I live my day, day to, I, like, I live my life by it because I used to, I used to do mood boards and things like that, and I was quite big on doing mood boards. I wanted, I wanted to achieve, but then, then I realised that I'd, I'd wait ages to, I'd be drawing these cars up, these houses up, whatever it was, and it was my, that, I felt like that was my goal to do that. Yeah. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be successful. I had to have this. I had to have that. And it went until I started getting them things. I was like, fuck this. It don't mean nothing to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you find you know it mean? value.
you're above that, innit? Can you hear me? Definitely, bro. Can you hear me, Tom? Signal's gone. Guys, I've just turned the comments off for a minute because the internet's bad, it might. You could, yeah, your connection's all blurry, bro. It's a bit blurry and the sand's cracking on and off. Back in the room, I can sort of, sort of see you fuzzy, but you're there, I can see you, I can hear you. That's all right, as long as we can hear you, mate. Yeah, I can hear you, bro. I don't think it's making a difference, I'll put them on or off. I can see you, yeah, yeah, I can see you, but it's blurry. So I can hear you now, that's better. Okay. Is that better, mate? Yeah, I can hear you, sweet. Everyone comes on this time of night, don't they? Everyone, everyone's blowing yeah. out lives now, do you know what I mean? Everywhere, that's, about, that's what it is, it's in there, just freezes up. But, yeah, um, so the, yeah, visionary, so... the visionary is the one, mate. You've got to, like, that's a big thing for me. It's just, just non-stop, just on to the next thing. I don't, I don't, I'm not satisfied with anything. So I had to stop with the cars. I love that. I just stop is, the cars. I don't, thing, wear, I don't wear. I don't wear watches. I like. I, I aspire to have a big gold room, uh, a big gold watch. Sorry, and it's like at the time, I was like, let's get it, let's get this, and then t towards the end of it, I was like, fuck this, mate. I don't even want to wear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's quality, Tom. It's not, not also love. It's like Conor McGregor says, you know, I love what he says about, um, what does he say? He's coming back to me. My mind's going blank out. Fuck, so what's it called? There's no such thing as talent. There's only obsession. I love that quote. The person more obsessed with what he does becomes the best at what he does. Do you know what? And I, I got put off by them sort yeah. of saying years ago, but I'm back on it. But I was like... I sort of started adding it up in well, my head, and I was like, "Hold on, if you're a shit." When you listen to you, when you listen to you, you could, you can hear that talking. You like, I've watched some of your interviews and stuff. You can hear the language in there. I don't think you mean to do it, but when you listen to you, if you've got that ear, you can you talk exactly like it. You know what I mean? But and the other thing is, I loved it. You got to tell me about you fucking. He's wore your trainers. Yeah. He's got your. He's got your shoes, isn't he? McGregor's got them. Who McGregor? He's got yeah. them. Eh? I see a picture, and I heard you said that I knew he was yeah, going to yeah, have yeah, them. Yeah, I see yeah. you on some program, Sam. I knew McGregor was going to my train. I knew so it. I remember, tell us about yeah, that. You know what? That blew me away. I love that one. We had like we've had quite a lot of big names around our stuff for uh, for a while, and um, the Pooji ones are sick though. Oh yeah, the Pooji one. That was a big visionary thing, you know. Yeah. That was crazy. That how I done that. I done that at the end of summer last year, and I was sitting there listening to the radio at my house, and a Biggie song come up, and I heard him say Pooji. And I just started yeah, sketching. Out, yeah. yeah, I just started sketching and drawing Kuji on this trainer, like like a madman. I didn't know anyone in Kuji. I had no idea, mate. I just knew that it was an expensive brand. And I've always loved it, but it was too expensive for 700 quid jumpers. Yeah, and I put, I'd done this shoe and I put on Instagram and my pal messaged me. and went, mate, I'm in New York with a geezer that owns Kuji. Shut up. Yeah, come over and meet us. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. That's what he like, say. It comes to you, didn't it? It comes yeah, to you. Yeah, good friend of mine who was like, he's, he's active, this geezer, and he's helped me a lot, and I've helped him a lot with certain things. He's probably helped me a bit more than I've helped him, he'll say, if he was watching this. And he said, that, and I just, the next thing, you know, I was in the Empire State Building, mate, on the fucking top floor of Kooji. I was Fuck at New York Fashion look. Week, and I turned the shoe around in, in about two months, and then I sold them out in three minutes. Shut up, seriously. Three minutes, gone. mate. Gone, yeah. <laughs> I, I got one pair for myself. <laughs> they gone that then? Is that what they like? Yeah, but you know edition? what? Yeah, limited edition, yeah, it was a one off. But you know what? See when that see when that happened, the mad thing is, is when I was selling out that collab, which I was on for ages and I wanted, I was thinking about who I could do it to who I could collab with next. Instead of just absorbing what I was doing and what I'd yeah. achieved with that. I was, I was picture. Yeah, I was thinking, fuck this, where we go next with this then? We've done this, let's go. Who, who, who are we collabing <laughs> with next? And so so I'm working we done a, we um we dropped the, um, a special with Harrod today. Did you which ask is Yeah, yeah, yeah so Mallet Harrod's trainer. So yeah, oh, man, my, my head's a million and million miles per hour all the yeah, time. Sick. 
that's it, man. That's because you're obsessed with it. That's what you say. And that's what that ADHD thing kicks in and we hyper focus. We're like, it becomes like, you just can't stop thinking about it. It's like obsession it when you find that passion. Yeah, and you know what? Not a lot of people, not a lot of people get it because it can, it makes you look, but why the fuck people keep writing laughing faces in this fucking thing? Hold on a minute. No sound, They're saying I've got no sound. Ah, uh, then I think. Oh, no, it's all right now. Sweet. You booze free, Tommy. Yeah, I don't drink. I don't drink. I'm on the water, mate. Oh, that's my turn. That yeah, I can see you, mate. I can see you. You sweet, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I can see you. Someone just said, do I drink? I said, no, I don't. I'm teetotal. You don't drink at all, Tom, no? Once, once in a blue moon. One, so you're, like, you're work, you've worked out, haven't you? You've cracked on with that as well, haven't you? Yeah, mate, you know what? I got bad sciatica about four years ago. And it's when it attacks your nerves. And I, lo I lost the movement yeah, in my... Killer, mate. I lost the movement in my right legs. All my muscles. My muscles was fucked in my legs. And, um, yeah, I vape. What's wrong with that, man? Don't start... No more scientists on this live, for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, yeah, so, no, do you know what? Let me what? just ping them up. put some questions at the end, guys. I'll turn them off. It's distracting. It weren't, it, weren't, it weren't for no health reasons that I stopped drinking. I was just like, I used to wake up in the morning if I'd had a drink and I'd like, I'd get para. I'd think, fuck this, someone's out there working harder than me, man. I can lose this from this. Do you know what I mean? I'd wake up an hangover, I'd feel sorry for myself. I'd order a pizza. Yeah. I'd wake up at 12 in the afternoon, one in the afternoon, and I'd be like, I ain't achieved nothing today. That night ain't done nothing for me. Yeah. Some someone's at it. Someone hungry like our old was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah? up now and they're doing what I've done and they're coming for me. And I ain't having yeah. that, mate. I ain't allowing it. So That's I'm a good, good way of looking at it, mate. That's so a I'm good gonna way. have a drink. A go on holiday. Of... Yeah, you got to be, isn't you? You got, you got, to, you've got, you got to try and stay like, um, you got to stay you... consistent. <laughs> You've been through mental health problems yourself. You remember it was a while back. Yeah, no yeah do you know what? So like, like, you went for an anxiety time. Like, do you know what is, yeah? So basically, and it's a, I ain't cleared this up properly. Basically, anything I do, yeah, and if, you, if you've seen it in the media, a lot of it is 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 um has been twisted. So a lot of it was like I got bullied when I was younger for having trainers all that nice. That's yeah. a load of bollocks. I didn't get bullied, never. And like, mm. the thing about me having like... um. The, the mental health thing basically was I um I was overworked I was travelling the world and I was like it's lonely man you think you're isolated now nah. you travel mm. to you travel around the world by yourself and you go you go meetings around the world and you, you stay in that hotel room by yourself or you go to China fly to China by yourself and then you see what fucking isolated it is and it was overwhelming yeah, yeah. man I was overwhelming. I was like, I was traveling the world. I was, I was doing well for myself. I was earning decent dough. And it was like, when I was doing it, it was like, there was no feeling to it. It was yeah, like, yeah, oh, I'm, just... I'm earning dough. I'm earning dough. I ain't going to be flashy. I ain't going to go and start wearing a load of watches. I ain't going to go out and start, start like up the West End boozing. What am I doing? I was just literally working, going home, working, going home. I had no fitness because I had sciatica. I lost all my muscles in one of my legs. So I could hardly walk at the time. Know. And I was still soldiering on through it. And then a few things happened. I had a car that I had. I wanted it for years. I bought a Porsche. I went in the barbers, come out, someone did it in the side of it and split it in half. And it was just all at once. So all of this stuff happened at Over, once. And the, and the more I got negative of it happening, the more it was coming to me, as you know. And it was like one day... I got, something happened I'm actually in contract about I can't talk about the same happened to me and it, it could have sent me under and I dealt with it and um, just I was exhausted and I woke up one morning and I just felt shit and I was like my head was hurting and I was like I can't I think I'm having a stroke so I rang my old man I said dad you've got to take me to the hospital I mean bits here badly I went there they said it's stress and then from there, mate, it was like getting up in the morning sometimes for a week was hard, man. Hard. It was like everything becomes becomes a big... It's a blur, man. Miss, everything a blur. Miss. Anything can set you off. You, can, you can't even talk about it at times because it chokes you up inside because it's bad what happens. It ain't a nice feeling. No. And like, 
it was, what it was, it was, they told me it was stress. I look at it more, it was like a little mini breakdown and it was me saying I need to work because yeah. you know, I need to stop working and take some chill time. Because, mate, I was going to bed at 12 from work, finishing work at 12, back up at 5. I was having five minutes to myself straight on it. I was smashing that. I, I was doing 18 hour days for fun. Have you, changed, have you changed it now, Tom? Have you got people doing it for you now? Have you sort of yeah, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I built a business. The business went so big up like, over a small amount of time. I'm not going to say the figures on it. No, no, but it's not it, went, it, it went it went big. And I had three people working for me. Three people, mate. Three me, people, my yeah. partner, and a few other people. And it was like, fuck, you know, sometimes I could, I could do a 24-hour work day, no problem. I used to fly to places and I'd, I'd not sleep 24 hours. I'd go straight through 36 okay. hours and I'd be in meetings. And then them times just showed me, man. It was like, well, I've got everything I need. Nothing I need. I've got a wicked family, a lovely girlfriend. I've got a lovely dog. I've got like a, I've got a lovely motor outside. Like I'm not driving because I don't even want no one to see me in it. I've got a fucking yeah. brand new Mercedes GT out there. I've not even done one mile in. And I'm like, I got my head around it sort of, and I was like, "Why the fuck am I doing this for? I'm not, I'm not enjoying yeah. it." So I started employing people. I started getting people with the same love as me, and I started doing it by helping people at the same time. Though, so seeing things in people and not looking for staff with qualifications, I'm more looking no, for people with passion. drive, passion, yeah, and drive, drive and, passion, and even yeah. and even a few of them lacked it at the time. And I was like, "Look, what what, what sort of journey do you want to go on here? What uh, do you want to? What do you want to do? Because I'm telling you." If you stick with me now, you're gonna fucking learn because I'm on a I'm on a mission here, and yeah. I built a team up and I just kept on building and then towards the end, I end up getting like um like higher higher people in when I could afford it. I employed my dad that sort of takes up takes care of the warehouse who I can trust. Yeah. And towards the end, mate, I just thought to myself, you know what, fuck it, I got to start enjoying this, you know. Yeah, I've got to enjoy it, innit? I got to stop worrying sure. about it yeah. non-stop every single day. All you do is wake up. When you come that from the point, that's probably the natural progression. I think like sometimes you get you get somewhere, you get content with what you got. You're flying around the world. You you know you mm. just at that level. You can't really see a future at the moment. You're just doing too many mm. hours, and all of a sudden it hits you. And I think it's natural progression. Sometimes it has to go. To you listen. You ain't listening. Boss, you ain't yeah, supposed to be out working. You ain't, you was never a worker. You were visionary, Tom. You know mm. that ain't your ain't your position. Someone else needs to be fucking wearing yourself out. In that area, you need to be fucking creating, and that's what you do, mm. isn't it? You know? And it's still hard to let go of, though. Like, right? still to this day, it's hard to let go. Of, but I'm get, I'm, I'm, I'm getting. There. Do you know what? I've, to... I've, studied, I've done a lot of study on entrepreneurs. And there's two types of, two types of entrepreneurs. One that um, works for the company, yeah. So that means an entrepreneur. They won't let, they won't let nothing go. They won't create systems because they, they love the, they love it too much, and they you know they can't let go. So what happens is they don't see their kids, they don't see their wife, they don't have fun. They don't have holiday, they're always at work. And if they're not in if they're not at the workplace, the business can go under. Yeah. Then you get the entrepreneur who creates who, who has who has the company work for them. It's the sort of two mindsets of sin. Then the, the entrepreneur has the company work for them. He can go to the gym in the morning. He can fuck off on holiday. He can do what he can open another side of the, uh, build the company up into another angle because he's got this set up running itself now. So I, I like that sort of um yeah, do you know what? Yeah, I've been, you know what I mean? I've, 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 but the thing is, I've been both. I've been yeah. both of them. Because I, I started that's what off, it as, sounds the, like. I started that's off what, as the first one. To me. I started off as the first yeah. one. And then the second one was employ someone, get systems in place, blah, blah, blah. And when I started doing that, then I started being able to work from my phone. And I didn't have to be in the office all the time. Yeah. And, uh, it and that's, working, that's what I was talking about, a natural, prog a natural progression. You've gone from the... Working for the mm. company is having the company work for you. It seems like you're naturally just building because you need that headspace to create your next level because you're obviously a creator. You've got As you said, your mind goes under my an hour. You mm. ain't going to stop You've got creating. You've you know got to. Never, mate. I'm doing it now while I'm talking, Jar. Like my phone now while I'm talking, Jar. <laughs> I'm getting WhatsApp messages pinging, ping, pinging, 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 I done I done a twelve hour <laughs> sale today online and it's gone fucking mental. Fucking crazy. That's and brilliant. I've got to deal with that. Yeah. Do you know, like, I've, I've like, when you, you know, when you look back sometimes to see where you come from for going through Romford and all the, all them sort of rough times, and looking back now, you know, you couldn't afford that pair of trainers, and now you're fucking giving people their dream. Do you ever sometimes sit back still and think, fuck me, like, this is, have I got it? You know, is it ever? No, because I'm just getting started, man. Love it, love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, look I've, I feel like I've dominated England, the market in England, for what, for my section. 
So like I'm I'm best seller in most stores. Like I'm in, and I'm in some do, good stores. Do um, you learn a lot from Europe as well? Because I used to work for the Germans for about for about five years, and um, they're so system. Like, everything I learned, I learned so a lot system. from Amsterdam. I learned a lot from Amsterdam. Yeah, Holland. Yeah, they're was, very similar. They're very Holland similar was the in the way they work. Me. But I can't be taught. I can't be taught. I can take note on what someone's doing, but I, I, trug, I struggle to be taught because I look at it like if he's been, if he's going to teach me how to do it, yeah. He, why ain't he already fucking done it by now? That's right. Yeah, I need yeah. my way of doing it. Yeah, that's why. I mean, do you, do, you, do you watch and like see what they're doing right? Take the best bit, sort of thing. You watch what others are doing, other companies, and yeah, I suppose so. But then now I feel like in England, I'm sort of in my own lane. I dictate what yeah, I'm doing myself. Sick. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I decide what we're doing, and I don't. I try not to. Where I'm at top in a lot of stores. There's no one really me to look round at, really, unless I go there to Selfridges none. and the Harrods and look at Gucci. Yeah. But then them, we're in a different league to each it's... other. They're, they're, a, they're, a, they're a six to eight hundred quid that I'm below 200. Yeah, but yeah. there ain't many people at my price point that main, maintaining, maintaining that, that place with, with what I do. Has Malik got any ideas for any other products except for trainers? Are you sticking to what you stick into the So we do trainers? clothing as well. We do clothing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Clothing's quite new. We've been doing clothing for about uh about seven months. But I'm doing something new. I've realised I'm about to drop sank and I realised yeah, two days good. ago and it's nearly done. So I've got yeah, sank yes. coming, which is is proper. Bang on, bang on, yeah. Yeah, bang yeah, on. yeah, proper. And then next thing, fuck knows, I might even make a car. I don't know, see how I feel. <laughs> 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 going fucking jet. So listen, everyone listen at home, yeah? Um, I hope you're getting the gist of what we're going for about visualisations, yeah? So let me just give you a little, a little idea of how this works. If you look at creative people and successful people, you'll find that everything gets made twice, yeah? Anything that you do is get made twice. It gets first made as a thought inside the mind, then it gets created outside here in reality. So if you're sitting in your garden like Tom, if you're sitting in your front room or your kitchen, look around the room now, and I'll play a little game with you, right? See if you can find me anything that never comes from nature and the earth in its original form, yes? Except for what comes from nature and the earth in its original form. See if you can find me anything, any object, anything you're sitting on, you're wearing, anything you're looking at, that never started as a fault first in a human's brain. See if you can find me one thing. Now, except what comes from nature and the earth in its original form, so, like, there ain't a fucking wallpaper tree. There's not a guitar Don't tree. Don't listen to a... his game, because there's not there's a thing that ain't. <laughs> there ain't, that's it. Except for, like, you know, inside and outside of every building in England, New York, there's nothing, yeah? Everything started as a fault. So anyone at home listening, the idea of what we need to get from this is that everything gets made twice. You have to first see it inside your mind on a consistent basis, yeah? Like, we talked about obsession earlier. You have to obsess with an end goal. Don't worry about how you're going to get there too much. Like Tommy said at the beginning, he said, um, I knew I was going to have it. I knew I was going to crack it. He didn't know what the fuck he wanted to crack it, but he knew he was. So it was just a matter of his, his mind working out where it was going to go. And, and anyone else that I want to get into this a little bit more, there's a part of the brain called the reticular activating system. It's a group of neurons at the bottom of the brain that work as a filtering system, which works in alignment with the law of attraction. It's only discovered six years ago, and it proves to me what all you guys are doing, talking about anxiety, talking about you know, mental health and focusing on the problem, you're creating fucking more of it. Get on your chat rooms. Oh, I've got anxiety, I've got anxiety. Yeah. You're setting your filter to find you proof and evidence you have anxiety. So you have to sort of see yourself being well, see yourself being happy, see yourself being successful. So get online, look at the reticular activating system. Um, so say it's a group of neurons at the bottom of the brain works a filtering system. Do you know, like if you bought a car, everywhere you go, you see that black car. If your girlfriend's pregnant, all of a sudden you see pregnant women and fucking babies everywhere. Your mum would go, there's something in the water. I see Mary earlier, our kids aren't sisters, they're <laughs> twins or something, yeah? So it's that, it's that sort of thing. That's, that's your RAS system. But it works what you focus on. So if you're focusing on what you want, it's working. And if you're focusing on what you don't want, like your problems all the time, it's starting to, it, it will fucking generate more of them for you. So it's more about focusing on what you want, not what you don't want. Not coming away from your problems, going towards your goals. So get fucking visualising. You know and I mean? the problem it's, is as well, yeah, is I'll try and say this to a lot of people, like the younger kids, and they'll go like, well, I'm, I'm, I, can't, I can't do that. I can't. I can't, yes. I can't get positive. I ain't got that. Mate, everyone's got it. You just don't know Definitely. yet. You don't know yet. Like, You've got to change the record. You've got to you change, have to change the it. Like, fucking hell, man. You know, have you ever noticed, like, when you meet older people, are always, like, always moaning. 
always like there's always, certain yeah. older people that are always moaning, yeah. They're always the ones that look a bit slumped, old, and all that. You know when you meet like a happy older fella, and yeah, just, yeah. Like he just don't really care. He don't take himself too serious. Always happy, and they look brand new. They it's do. One of them ones you do. You got to you got to try and you got to try and remain positive all the time. Well, old, it, it, I, my, my, I do like one to one practice. I've been practicing Ashwell Sports and Country Club, so I do like one to ones there. My, my little practice up in the swimming pool. There's a gym underneath it. There's his old boy Wally in there. So speaking like he just reminded me of him. He's an absolute belt. He's about eight odd years old, right? You walk in the changing room. We start by the night. And I go, fuck your boy away, Wally. <laughs> what do you do? He goes, what's the fucking matter with you? About eight, six years old, right? He sits there, all his nuts hanging out. And he goes, oh, what's the matter with you? Put a fucking away, Wally. He goes, he went, I mean, went, anyway, I got talking to him one day, right? I went, well, what makes you so fucking happy? Ah, what's the trick, mate? You're eight odd years old. You're in the gym every day. Like, he's got a little hunch back and that. Does, does squats with a broomstick and all that. I went, what's, what's the trick with you, mate? You're saying so happy. And this is gospel, what he said to me. He went, do you know what it is, Rob? I won't take their fucking medicine. That was exact words. When, mm-hmm. when, what are you talking about? Well, we went, well, they want to give you a tablet for your heart, your blood pressure, went, but it don't go just to your heart or your liver. It goes all around your body. He went, I won't fucking listen to them, Rob. He went, I come in here every day, have a bit of me banana in the morning. He went, and it, it makes me laugh. He goes, like, I went down to disco. It was like a white man's club. He's in the birds <laughs> around me now. You know, I get more birds when I'm 20. He goes, like, he's always he's, he's, he's a believer, swine, isn't it? You know what I mean? He's and a believer, it's true, it's what you say, mate. It's, it's the banter, do you know what I mean? It's, the, it's that, 100%. that good vibration. 100%, mate. So what's the plan? So um, how are you getting on with the moment? So I'm anyways, you suppose you're just still busy, mate. So there's no change for you, really, is it? It's still uh, go, go, go. A lot of my, all my stores are shut, but um, online's doing really well. Give me a bit of time to reflect on a few things as well. I'm, mate, I've loved yeah. it, you know? I've loved it. I've been good as gold. Quality. Been good as gold. I've been calorie counting, cooking for myself, <laughs> doing a bit of cleaning up. I've uh, got a bit of gym equipment, so I'm doing a bit of training in the morning. And then just, just riding out, mate. I ain't been out for six weeks, so seven weeks now. Nah. Shit. plotted up. I ain't, I ain't interested. I'm just plotted. It's nice. It's <laughs> nice to go. It's, it's nice. Do you know what? I've done, it's... That's the first time ever I've bought a lawnmower and a shed. I've started cutting me grass. Bought a strimmer. Bought a jet wash. I was doing all them little things I would never well, normally do. They're just normal, I mean? cho- that's normal living things. Normal isn't it? chores. Like, I'm chatting to my next door neighbour while I'm doing it. It's lovely, mate. It's like, I'm, oh, I'm really nice. enjoying it. So, listen, it's all, all the madness will come back soon and I'll be straight back at it. But at the minute, I'm just taking this time just to, to sort of regroup in my head and realise, look, we can't do nothing. There's nothing we can do. For that's one, right. yeah. fuck all it's fuck all you man. can do right now, yeah? No matter what anyone it's... tells you, you can't fix this situation, yeah? yeah. All you, you can do right is you're off got to listen, and I ain't the sort of one that gets told what to do with everything, but you've got to listen to what the government says, yeah? yeah. And stay indoors, yeah? <laughs> Whether you are or not, I ain't judging you. And hopefully get the numbers down and try and put, save a few older people, and that's it. And I'm all right, mate. I'm plotted up. It's lovely. <laughs> so you got any advice, Tom, for anyone in the future? Got any, any advice for how people can move forward? What's your, what's your advice for them? So I'm at home. Any, got any advice you know, for them? You know what? My one is at the minute, I'm seeing a lot of people on um, social media putting pictures up of, like, um, inspirational books, like millionaire books, rich, poor, rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, and like, years, like, yeah, yeah, they're up early, showing everyone they're reading it. Stop fucking showing everyone you're reading your book, yeah? Get off of your ass. And go and think put into something. practice. Go and put into practice. Mm. Go and write your own story. Do you, know you minute, think... do you know what? It's like a trend. It's like a trend. It's like, hold on. If I put this on Instagram now, everyone's going to have a look at this and go, he's yeah. at it, that geezer. Well, Mate, you like, ain't doing nothing. It's like every reality star actor or actress at the minute has become a fitness fucking instructor. We're not, won't they? Mate, <laughs> that, this is why it's a good time for me, yeah? <laughs> you know what? It's, you know what? I'll tell you that. It's a good time for me because I ain't chasing my towel. Not, I don't give a fuck, mate, if I stay relevant or not. And my followers go up, I can't give two fucks, mate. I don't care how many likes I get on my picture. I don't care how I look. I couldn't give a fuck. And now, <laughs> when you hit that time in your life, that's when you become dangerous. Yeah, and that's yeah. when you can start proper having it. Yeah, because you, start, you, yourself, you, you, you get away from what other people are doing and caring yeah. what people are thinking of you. Like, I don't need zoom to. In I've that, been, that's proper I've tunnel been, vision, then, isn't it? You're been proper training, zoomed I've been, in. Mate, I've been training since I've, I've been boxing from when I was seven until about fifteen, and then I've been training in the gym since I was sixteen, and I'm twenty-seven now. 
It ain't nothing new to me. Why well, I've got to put on yeah. Instagram and, like me doing squats and shit like that <laughs> in my garden. Fucking having a laugh. <laughs> well, who, who wants to see me, my Barbie? I'm like love handles <laughs> trying to pick a weight up. Just save it. So this time now, it's like you've got no excuse really. If you're not working and you're furloughed, and um, in it, you, what you said about that book thing is true. A lot of people can understand things, but it don't mean you've learned it. If you can't apply it to your life, like you're saying, get up and take action. You, you you've not learned it. So people can understand the law of attraction. They can understand stuff. Yeah, but if you can't apply it to your life and you ain't getting success, then you've not fucking learned it. And I think that's the, the key yeah, is to always to take mad. action. It's fucking, it's actually driving me a bit mad, man, because you know <laughs> what? I, 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 my pet hate, yeah, is, and, and it, it's not a good thing because I like to hear people with what they're doing with themselves. I like to hear that. I like people with ambition. I like people with big dreams, yeah? But do you know how many people have come to me with dreams and ambitions, yeah? And how many people... I've only stuck to it for weeks. Oh, How many man, people are, 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 are the next are the next biggest thing, yeah? And they're gonna do they're gonna take the world over. Understand under I reckon it's ninety nine point nine percent, yeah? Mm. And understandable, if it's something out of your hands that stops you from achieving it, if a family member gets ill, or if you start suffering with some kind of mental health and you need to focus or on this, yourself, yeah. or this or this virus or whatever, then fine. But I don't like people look do not stop talking about it. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. They're going to do this. Yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah, read these job. books. They're going to get these books, mate, and they're going to put them on Instagram and share one they're reading this book, yeah? You're reading, you're reading someone else's story. Go and write your fucking own book. Fucking own book, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's you know true, I mean? isn't it? It's, it's so it's true. Like, it's insane, mate. People it's don't it. understand that the, the change comes from within, doesn't it? It's within here. Like, I'll, I'll of course it does. I'll tell a little metaphor to people all the time. I say, like we all say, they're looking for this book to change their life. They're looking for some, someone to tell them they're great so they can feel confident. Someone to tell them they love them so they can feel whole. It's that sort of shit. But I say, you know, change happens in here. You've got to go inside yourself and fucking create it. Because I'll say it like this, right? If you was indoors, I mean, you were neighbours, yeah? And, the, and um, mm. there's a power cut, right? And I think, fuck this. You know, I'm going to my mums. I can't sit here in the dark. And I go to grab my car keys. They fall on the floor. Get on my hands and knees. They go under the sofa. I can't find them for love nor money, right? I see my blinds open. I think, fuck it, I'm going to go and stand under the street light. I can't sit in this darkness. I can't find my keys. I go out in the street, get on my hands and knees, and start rummaging about on the floor, right? Now you pull up, Tom, and you go, you mean, I go, Rob, what are you doing down there, mate? I'm looking for my keys, Tom, right? I'll give you an arm, Rob. You jump on your hands and knees for about 10 minutes looking about, and you go, Rob, where did you drop them, mate? And I go, oh, in there, in there, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> in doors. You go, you come. Okay, you fucking winding me up. You off your fucking head. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's, it's the true. same thing. They're looking outside it's with true. the keys when you know they're fucking inside. It's, Turn the mate, fucking light on and start looking. Do you know what I mean? So you get, yeah, you've got to, you got to stop. you got to stop. you got to, you got to literally, you got to start using this time right now to... Not everyone has a niche, I get that. I didn't have one for years. I didn't know what I wanted to do. But start believing yeah. in yourself and start looking for little clues. You ain't going to go out there and just go and get it overnight. But like this is a time here, start researching things. Instead of it's putting true. on Instagram that you're reading this book about getting rich, you ain't going to fucking get rich if you ain't got a product to sell. <laughs> and, and you don't know what to do behind it. It ain't going to happen. Um, you can read it's... as many books as you want, yeah, about trading and doing this and that. If you ain't got a plan in your head, to go and get that, and you ain't got the drive to go and push it as hard as you can, I guarantee you'll last a week. It's a yeah. week. No longer than a week. Yeah. Because you're just, you're, you're doing it because you're, you're, you're believing in your head that apparently it's going to come to you because you've read this book. You need to go and get it. <laughs> you know, isn't action, it? Yeah. Mental, uh, people ask me, this is what people ask me all the time, yeah? I get messages <laughs> all the time, and no disrespect to anyone watching this. If you have asked me, it's nothing personal, but Coming from myself, I told the story behind it. I get message after message daily from people to the point where I've had to stop reading them. I'm starting a business off. What's your advice? It's one bit of advice. Go and do it. Go yeah? and start. Yeah. Go and start. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I'm about to start a clothing brand off. I've got a name for it. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, but when it's done, will you promote it? What the fuck are you worried about me promoting it when you haven't yeah. got off your got off your ass to go and find out how you're gonna that's do right. it? Do you know what I mean? And you know, people people can't be you. you. That's your vision. You can't jump in someone's head and nick their vision. It's like all these Richard Branson books. Yeah, I read Branson's book. Like you're saying, it means fuck all because 
when you look at Richard Branson, it's a beautiful success story. I love it. Yeah. I love the visionary. Don't get me wrong. I love the process. But listen, you can't fucking copy what he actually did with the content because fucking they were using typewriters back then. Now we've got computers and phones. You know, like technology changes, needs change, oh. must change, um, uh, transport changes. It's, it's like you can't predict. We can't predict what the next fucking five years are, are going to be like, what products are going to be out there. We never had a fucking iPad as a kid. You know what I mean? I never, uh, like, the idea of having a phone. phone, a watch where you could see your face was on Star Trek. Bro. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not, it was not a real thing. Oh, it was 3210. At the yeah. Nokia 3210, and he's invented yeah. change the colour in the front of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays, like, it's fucking crazy. So we can't predict. So, you know, what, what's in line for the rest of the world in the future? We're never going to know. So school can't really prepare you for it. Do you know what I mean? No. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is. But, um... Yeah, Tom, I'd like to thank you for your time. And I've gone a bit over. My mate. pleasure, really, brother. I'll take your time. That was class, Tom. Did honestly. you get any questions? Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've shut them down. I've, I've turned them off earlier. We've got... Um, switch off from my time. Um, oh, you silly... Only silly ones. You still with Georgia, yeah. Oh, you've yeah, got, nearly all, all, got nearly all, all of your shoes. Um, there was, I put the thing on quick. Let's stick some questions on. Any questions, guys? I've just stuck the comments on. Any questions for Tommy? Anything about visualizations moving forward? Anything there? See what comes up, Tom. Big up, man. No, everyone's on the um, everyone's on the DJ ones now, bro. I'm watching the DJ. Yeah, Some people. of them are having it, mate. Some are having <laughs> it, man. Stay safe, man. Yeah, the fucking that, um, thing is on, isn't it? What's the most famous person you sold your trainers on? Secret. Um, thing you're about. Most famous person you sold trainers to. Um, Mayweather bought a pair of selfages the other week when he was Shut in there. Shut up. You're joking. Yeah. yeah. The guy that works that. there messaged, the guy that works there messaged me and said, Mayweather's in here and he's got you find the trainers. Fucking blind the time. That's just... uh, do you believe in the law of attraction? Yeah, definitely. How can I start my own bike company? Owen, <laughs> no idea, brother, because if I knew, I'd have started my own one as well. Where's your um, favourite holiday then? What's the flavour of your vape? <laughs> Had <laughs> thought about a store in Mykonos. Yeah, Mykonos. Mykonos is on the cards, hundred percent. But um, not with a market at the minute. Obviously, taking a retail unit on at the minute would be a bit crazy. So um, I know it sounds really bad, but you need to wait, wait for this virus to turn to go over, wait for the recession to hit, and then that's when you start nicking uh, leases and things like that. Greeks, what's happening, brother? So my poor, do you think about who do you have out of AJ and Fury? Uh, Fury, would you reckon? I'm not gonna lie, Char. No. It's Fury all day long, mate. That's what I mean. That's what I thought. Yeah. Fury all day long. He's too. He's too upright. I think the other fella. But listen, Joshua. Oh, Joshua, I'll tell you something. Listen, Joshua's a different beast. I'll tell you why. Because he's a he's a, such a marketable person. Yeah, the way yeah. he's done everything, whether you like him or not, like, no, I'm, not, I'm not sitting there saying that I'm a huge AJ fan. I think he's done phenomenal, mate. He's, he carries himself well. In, yeah. the, in the interview you watch him in, he knows how to talk to people. He's, he's a gentleman fucking, as well. He seems a, a very a, polite he's, gentleman. Yeah. He seems like a gentleman. I ain't met him, but he seems right. Seems but like Fury, him, yeah. mate. Fury. Look at Fury, man. Look what Fury's overcome. Yeah, for him to yeah. just overcome what he's overcome to get back in the ring, it's fucking untouchable, isn't it? And he's done it. He's done it for a power beyond the the belts now. He's done it. You've never seen anything like it, yeah. That he's proper. Yes. I've got him on tomorrow. Do you know that? Have you, do you watch boxing? Isn't that new Dennis Dennis um, McCann coming up? Dennis the Menace McCann. No. He's mustard. There's a new little boxer coming up. He's on. He's on here tomorrow. He's um, Al Smith's got him a trainer. Al Smith. He's um, he's he's, he's won all the ABAs and all the all the schools. He's just gone pro young. He's a um, little Irish kid. He's um, yeah, he's fucking unbelievable. He's, he's like on new, here tomorrow. He's on here. He's like a new Prince Nazim. After jump, jump on thingy, Dennis the Dennis the Menace. Yeah, I'm obsessed McCann. with that Brian Garcia, mate. You seen him? Ah, oh, fucking oh. hell, that um, yeah, unbelievable hand speed, mate. If I was gonna try and jump on a sponsor for a boxer over over in America, it'd be him. I know he's that. Gonna, he's un he's unbelievable, isn't he? Where do you see yourself? Hold on, where's this? Uh... I would stand. <laughs> Where would you see yourself in five um, five years? Um, five years, just wherever it takes me, man. I can't predict. I can't predict the next like two years. I'm, I can't predict the next week. I don't know what's going on next week. <laughs> um, someone just said, uh, "Will you do your own documentary?" Do you know what the documentary thing? I've had a lot of chats about it, but. 
every time like, I'll, I'll go to have the chat about doing it and I'll get right into it. And then it's like, it don't end up happening. I think, thank fuck for that. Because I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on so fast. It was like, I ain't even doing nothing when I was going to do it. So just, we'll see. We'll see. Um, is there still money m- me made from Ecom? My Ecom is probably the the biggest earner Ecom's own websites. Um, yeah, yeah. If anyone don't know. Ecom's probably the biggest platform, yeah, of course, because you get full margins on your product. And as long as you, um, you use the right marketing techniques and um, you give a good service and you have a good product, then of course. But stores, stores give you the um, the brand name. You got to be next to the store, the the the, the um, big brands first to get your name out there. Been taking notes on that. Did we? Did, been taking more notes on the than we've done in uni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just say twenty years. Yeah, this this box is good, mate. Who's your favourite boxer, son? I'm friends with a lot of them, but um, Dillian White for me, man. I love him. He's like he's a good yeah. friend of mine, and he's just he's entertaining, and he's a he's a lunatic. <laughs> Dillian White for me, but look, there's a, there's a lot of talent out there, isn't there? Definitely but I know does. a lot of them, so I'm not going to say it because they all start getting on me. <laughs> in case anyone's watching. Yeah, this um, is fake. Are you in a? Are, are you? Do you live in a rainforest? Yeah, this is the back of my garden. <laughs> <laughs> in spite of his very early days, I myself would love a documentary. No, I think you make a great documentary, and all, bro. What would you do if you if you didn't make mallet? Um, make something else. <laughs> I'd I'd probably, yeah, me. I would have probably done something. Something. Um, I probably wouldn't have been fashion if I didn't do shoes. It wouldn't have been fashion. Um, I would have probably, personally, if I didn't do mallet and I was on the show, I would have saved up and probably uh, tried as hard as I could to go into property. I'd have put money into property. Mallet, your trainers are sick. Yeah, but, um, oh, Tom, thank you very much, mate. Mate, um, thanks for having me, what, man. What I was going to say to you is, yeah, um, I'll, I'll send you a message after, I'll send it. Oh, Definitely. Okay, but, um, hey, listen, thanks for everyone for tuning in, yeah? And Rob, thanks for having me, bro. Stay no, safe, you're joking, everyone, yeah? mate. You're unbelievable, mate. It's really good. Your story, I knew your story was going to be sick, bro. It's such mate, a do you know what? I ain't even, I ain't, do you know what it is? I ain't even, um, it's hard on this thing because the, um, cool, so the, the thing signal and then all the comments and all that. Picking up, I know. It so one day, it, one day we'll sit down and we'll have a proper catch up, man, and we'll go yeah, through it, probably. I'd love to do that, bro. I'd love to. Have a good evening, mate, yeah? Tom, you're so right, kind, mate. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much. God bless you. Yeah, Good luck in the future. Bye, mate. Bye. Take it easy, bro.